what's good guys so in this video we're going to be going over uh knit and row act client communication okay so um think about a user having like a buy button or an equip button um on the row act side we're going to be handling like in the row act component we're going to be handling okay player has pressed a button or clicked a button and then we're going to be communicating over to knit uh and knit's going to have the uh functionality um so yeah let's go ahead and get started all right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two folders inside of replicated storage this is actually replicated first so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to name our folders and then move everything to replicated storage so first of all we're going to have row act components and then we're going to do controllers and we're going to drag everything make sure that you got your row act and your packages which contains knit and everything associated make sure that that is in your uh project or your file when you're doing all this stuff okay so let's create a module script in here and a we're gonna name this our controller then we're gonna create a module script i'll just copy this and paste it we're gonna paste it into the component and we're gonna call this our component now let's create a two local scripts okay so a local script two local scripts and start a player screen one is going to be the uh, knit start for the client side so knit start client is what i like to name it and then the other is going to be called row act mounter this is going to handle mounting our uh row act components the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to knit start on the client we're just going to handle that real quick so let's go ahead and get all of our uh variables like I like to use wait for child on the client um, we're going to knit add or actually what is it I freaking forgot knit what is it? Oh, okay. We need to require. Uh, and now we're going to do knit add controllers. And we're going to just give it the um, location of our controllers. So there you go right there. We could do knit.start and then function print knit has started on the client and then we can do catch all right and so that's all we're going to do for the knit start client script um pretty simple and what we're going to do is go over to our controller now and we're actually going to copy these actually we just want to copy this because we don't need to use any of that wait for child uh actually yeah we're going to use wait for child because it's still kind of client just to be safe even though it's in replicated storage and technically like you don't need to worry about that if it's in replicated storage but whatever it's faster to copy and paste anyways um so now what we're going to do is we're going to create our controller. So, or yeah, our controller knit situation. So knit.create 
controller and we're gonna pass in a name and we're gonna call it our controller um and that's all we're gonna do for now we're also gonna return our controller we're gonna set up the two um functions for our controller knit init and then we're going to do uh knit start and um this is all we're going to do right now now let's set up the react side of things okay so first off we're going to do right here this is our react mounter we're going to do first replicated storage um row act all right and that's all we're really going to do for right now on that side we're going to come back to that in like two seconds we're going to go to our component first though and do the component side of things first okay so let's go ahead and do that um so we're going to do that and we're going to do local our component equals row act dot component extend we're going to give it a name all right we're going to return our component now we're just going to set up the um two functions for our proact component so we're going to do component uh enits and we're going to do uh render as well um little typo no bigs no bigs okay mm, all right so now this is like set up pretty much right so, but let's create some ui real quick some default some de default default all right so Um, we're gonna create a little text button. And just gonna give it some properties real quick. Okay, that's set up. Let's go back to our Roact mounter real quick. Okay, and now we're gonna finish setting this up. We're gonna do above here, we're gonna get Roact components folder. Um, okay, and then what we're gonna do is get our components. and it's going to be in our row act components and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a handle variable and then we're going to say down here handle equals row act dot mount row act dot create element our component pass in props we're not going to do that right now though the second argument for your mount is going to be the player GUI. So let's go ahead and make those variables just to make it super neat. So So player GUI third argument is going to be the name 
All right, and so that's all we're gonna do for that right now. Let's go back to knit, okay? Our controller. Now, we're gonna be creating a bindable, okay? In order to do this, we're gonna need to use signal, which is a util associated with knit. And we're going to require it, and this is the path to get that. Right here, just knit.util.signal that gets signal, and signal is used to create bindables, aka signals. Uh, so, what we're going to do here in our knit create controller, we're going to create a signals table, and we're going to call this signal button activated equals signal.new. Now we have created a signal, our first signal. So, in here, to make things super tidy and neat, we're going to make it a variable self dot signals dot button activated. I always like to put a bindings note for my bindings button activated connect on button activated. And now let's create a local function here on button activated. We're going to print uh, button has been activated. All right, so that's the signal side of the knit controller, okay? Um, on the client, which is knit controller. Knit controller is your client sided. So let's go over to our Roact mounter, actually. Yeah, our ROAC mounter. So now we're going to create a variable button activated. We're gonna have this equal to nil because it's equal to nil until we get it, right? Until it exists. And this is how we're gonna do that, all right? First, we're gonna actually, what we're gonna do is we're also going to get the packages folder. And we're also going to require knit. Um, oh, packages, I did replicated. Okay, and now what we're gonna do, now it's important that this knit part is below the handle or else sometimes we'll get a knit error It'll catch, it'll throw a little error. It doesn't break anything, but it's best to just avoid that situation, okay? At least it didn't break anything when I was testing, and I tested a lot, so um, yeah. The error didn't break anything, the little warn statement, but it's best to just avoid that, so put this knit part down below. But we're gonna do knit on start, and then function, and what we're gonna do is we are going to get our knit controller, okay? So local our controller equals knit dot get controller and then the name of our controller and that's why we name our controllers and services so we can, you know, get them. Um, and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say uh, not a local, but we're going to say button activated equals um, button activated equals our controller dot signals dot button activated. Now what we're going to do is we are going to update, use Roac dot update to update our props for our main component. So what we're going to do here is pass in our handle. Okay, and then we're gonna do row act dot create element and we're going to just not uh quotes, that was my bad. Pass in our components, pass in our props, button activated, equals button activated. Alright, and so that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, we need to do these props as well. Alright, so this is what we're doing, okay? We're we're mounting our our component, okay? And then when and this this the reason why we're doing it this way is because 
um, when we mount, our controller may have not been initialized yet, so the signal may not exist. And so that's why we use the on start for um, knit. So this is um, the vent that runs when knit is started, basically. Uh, at least that's what I think it does. I didn't actually research this, I just used it and it works. And I mean, on start, like what else could that be for? So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we're just gonna return button activated because we need to update it. Um, yeah, because I know in the past I've not done this return for when I've updated these and it went back to nil so i always return it now but um yeah so this should be it on the roact mounter side okay uh for getting our signal and passing it in as props now let's go back to our component so in the enit we're going to create this function on button activated equals function we're going to use underscore rbx now rbx is just the default that react documentation uses i believe and then um underscore just means that we're not using this uh argument or that we're getting or whatever we're not using it um it exists but we're not using it so yeah it's better to just leave that as underscore rbx or underscore whatever or just underscore to just let yourself know and other developers know that you're not using this okay so now let's go to self.props dot button activated and then we're just gonna fire because this is a signal and this is where we're firing the signal so now we're gonna go down to our button okay and we're going to do activated equals and then we're going to do self dot props and if we really wanted to be super super you know crazy um organized we would do self we usually do self dot props make them little variables up here but i'm not going to do that and it's actually not even self dot props it's self dot on button activated so i'm tripping it's a little function that we made boom all right now let's test it if we have any bugs i might flip my lid well we have something so it's not actually working yet let's see why Do a catch right here, maybe. Just to see, okay. So it should be working, but let's see why it wouldn't be working. Um. And that's why it's not working is because of a little typo. Okay, so it works. It freaking works, dude. So yeah, that's pretty much how you're going to uh, set up your Roact components, okay? So really, uh, for context, let me just say this, okay? No events should be in your components no events should be in your components no uh and what i mean by that is like so this knit on start shouldn't be handled in your component let's say you had an event in replicated storage just a regular event remote event in replicated storage right you don't want to get that on here on your component you want to access it on the Roact mounter script. So basically, yeah, just no handling of the, not 
like no requiring or like setting up your event variables on the um, accessing your events on the uh, components you want to pass them as props always so just yeah um, but yeah that's pretty much it so that would be how a way that you could use your uh, row act project with your knit project um, and you can connect your UI to your knits okay uh, and yeah so I hope that video was helpful peace